Islands have played a central part in the development of our understanding of evolution and also ecology. They are the laboratories of evolution. By studying them one after the other, we are studying experiments that have been performed through evolutionary time. Of course, the largest island that biologists concern themselves is called planet Earth. The Earth is large and very difficult to study uh, the process of evolution every place it occurs. And so islands are microcosms. They're small examples of patches with definable boundaries in which we can study the species that exist there. Usually it's a very small subset of the species that occur on the Earth with a uh, much smaller population size, so one could actually have a hope of knowing and understanding everything that's going on within this particular set of species. Each island that has been isolated for a long time is a place where different environmental pressures like presence or absence of a predator, presence or absence of a disease, presence or absence of a certain kind of food is particular to the environment of the island and therefore those influences on evolution can be studied and the steps that lead to one form or another can be worked out by going from one island to the next to see the different degrees in which the process of evolution is unfolding. So two of the great questions in evolutionary biology are what happens in populations? How do species adapt to their environment? And then over longer periods of time, how does one species turn into many different species? Species are very good at adapting to a very small part of the environment. And so you, you can have lots of different species coexisting, each one doing a different thing, eating a different type of food, living in a different place, and so on. Then you go from one place to the next, you'll, you can have the same set of habitat types, but they're different species because they've been separated and evolved in different ways. And then over time, as more species evolve, other species evolve to utilize those species, to eat them, to use them as mutualists, and so on. And so in that way, you end up with millions of species. It's easy to find species that are found in only one part of the globe if we go to islands, because those animals and plants have probably evolved right on that island and haven't been able to disperse to other areas. And so they're really fascinating for the evolutionary biologists to study because their uniqueness, what we call endemism, is so great. There are many examples of island species which are, which are larger, feed in different ways, or are smaller, or somehow different from the, their nearest relatives in the mainland. And we think that this, these are all examples of ecological release which have allowed those species to um, undergo evolutionary change in directions not permitted on the mainland, not permitted by competition. It's something to do with being on islands that causes or allows this kind of evolutionary change.